At the beginning of this unit, I mentioned crosswalks. And I believe what I said was that crosswalks are a way of translating between metadata schemas, uh, which, as you can probably imagine, once you start getting lots of metadata schemas in the world, becomes necessary. And as we've seen, there are lots of metadata schemas in the world. There are lots of metadata schemas in the world even for the same purpose. For example, provenance. Now, as I said before, many of those are just proposals, but there are competing standards to describe the provenance of resources. And first of all, how are you going to choose? And then if you have created records <clears throat> in one provenance schema, what if a different schema wins the day in five years? Then you have to translate to the other, the other provenance metadata schema. What are you going to do? The answer is crosswalks. Now, not this kind of crosswalk. Now, in the United States, that thing is called a crosswalk. I understand that in other countries, that's called a zebra crossing. Um, and maybe it's just that uh, I'm in the United States, so I think that's kind of a funny name because you don't usually see zebras using them. Um, anyway, I think I'm funny anyway. Uh, I don't mean that kind of a crosswalk. I mean this kind of a crosswalk. <clears throat> now, crosswalks allow you to translate between metadata schemas the same way that you can translate between natural languages, between human languages, right? Only much, much simpler because natural languages are very complicated. You have, you know, thousands or millions of words and terms in a natural language where metadata schemas are much, by design, much simpler, right? You have a more limited set of statements that you're allowed to make using a metadata schema and a more limited vocabulary that you can choose from to make those statements. This, of course, as I'm sure you already know, is the Rosetta Stone. Now, the Rosetta Stone has three scripts on it. It has ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, Demotic, which is, I understand, a different Egyptian script, and ancient Greek. Now, my understanding of the story behind the Rosetta Stone is that before the Rosetta Stone was found, and I'm not an Egyptologist, but this is, you know, what I learned in school anyway, when the Rosetta Stone was found, Egyptologists were not able to decipher hieroglyphics. But Greek was a known language, and as I understand it, Egyptologists were at the time working on demotic, so it was sort of semi-known. But Egyptologists found the Rosetta Stone, and, and it became clear, because Demotic was partly known, that this was the same text in three different scripts. And so Egyptologists were able to work out what the hieroglyphics meant, because the Greek was known and the Demotic was at least partly known. So that allowed them to decrypt, decode, the hieroglyphics. So the Rosetta Stone is a crosswalk. It is a crosswalk between three languages, and it became the key to decoding an unknown script. Now with metadata schemas, you're not going to have an unknown metadata schema because as we've seen, the, the namespaces and all of the files that you would ever need to decode a metadata schema are gonna be out there on the web somewhere, but the translation between languages, between schemes, is analogous here. You can do the same kind of translation between any two natural languages, for example. Now, I've just created a simple crosswalk here between English and German, and you, know, you can imagine this table going on for thousands or millions of rows because both English and German are fully fledged natural languages with millions of words in them. And this table doesn't even get into things like phrases and sentences, you know, let alone more subtle things like connotation or shades of meaning or whatnot. Um, so the danger of translation in natural language using 
a table like this is that semantics get lost, shades of meaning will get lost. This is a very simple vision of what translation is, but never mind that because metadata schemas are very simple. And this is in fact how translation across metadata schemas, how crosswalks actually work. So let's actually look at a metadata crosswalk. What we have here is a crosswalk table. This particular table is from the excellent book by Mirtha Baca, Introduction to Metadata is the full title, and it's a book out of the Getty Institute. And notice that this particular metadata table is actually several crosswalks because every column is a different metadata schema. Every single one of these is a different metadata schema, some of which we haven't even talked about in this course, and some of which we won't talk about in this course, because there are just simply too many metadata schemas out there in the world to, to address all of them, even in an eight-week course. So let's just look at CDWA, which we've looked at in a previous unit, and Dublin Core, which of course we've also looked at fairly extensively. The first thing is object work type, which we looked at when we were looking at CDWA in, a, in an earlier unit. So the object work type in CDWA translates to the Dublin Core element type. It translates to all of these other things and all of these other metadata schemas as well, but we're not gonna worry about those just yet. On the other hand, catalog level, catalog level in CDWA, you may remember, is a description of the granularity of the thing being described. Is it an individual item? Is it a group of items, etc.? So catalog level doesn't have an equivalent in Dublin Core. There just is no way to translate catalog level into Dublin Core. Right? You can give a description that is the equivalent of catalog level in the Dublin Core element des uh, description, but there are other things that you can do with the Dublin Core element description too, so it's not a direct translation. Let's look at components or parts. Components or parts um, translates to format dot extent. Now, format dot extent, or I should say extent, is a qualifier onto format. It's a qualifier for the Dublin Core element format that allows format to be more specific about what's called extent, which is size or duration of the particular file format. So that is a translation. So we have three distinct things happening here. First is we have elements that translate directly, elements that more or less translate, but with some extension to Dublin Core, and then things that just simply don't translate at all. Title text translates to title, but title language has, again, no translation whatsoever. Now, you could create a qualified Dublin Core element. You could create, for example, title dot language, or you could create the opposite, language dot title in Dublin Core. You could make those up, but the point is, is that Dublin Core doesn't have those qualifiers straight out of the box, that you'd have to invent something, and for this translation table, that does not exist. There is no way of making that translation. What should be clear at this point from this crosswalk table is that you can have crosswalks between any two metadata schemas. You could translate between any two of these. It, it just doesn't matter. The point is, as long as you've got two metadata schemas, you can line up where the translations are possible and where they are not as long as the two metadata schemas have similar scopes or use cases, right? A crosswalk exists between, between CDWA and Dublin Core 
because they have similar scopes. Some of they're talking about, you know, describing resources. You want to talk about, you know, creator of the resource and the scope of it and dates and all of the things that you want to be able to say when you're describing objects. But CDWA is, of course, much more detailed. It has much more depth on describing works of art than Dublin Core is capable of. So there is a lot that does not translate. Crosswalks are a form of what's called interoperability. Interoperability. Crosswalks allow translation across metadata schemas, or I should say between metadata schemas, so that you can take metadata records that were created in one system and import them into another system, or re repurpose a metadata record that was created for one use, for example, for an institution's own record keeping, and repurpose that metadata record for another use completely, for example, displaying it on the web, or to share a metadata record between institutions. For example, the Library of Congress creates lots of metadata records about books and libraries in the United States, at least, are able to buy those metadata records off of the Library of Congress and import them into their own online library catalogs. So you're taking a record from one institution and importing it into a system for another institution. That's interoperability. It allows metadata records and institutions to interoperate. And that's the entire purpose of a metadata translation table, a, a crosswalk such as this. It allows interoperability between institutions and systems. But you have to be careful when using a crosswalk because, as you've seen, a lot can be lost in translation. 